Hi, my name's Ed Nolan and I'm an A-level psychology teacher and today's video is going to be a brief overview of a biological explanation of addictive behaviour, specifically looking at the neurotransmitter dopamine. Now, neurotransmitters are involved in communicating between neurons. So the more active neurotransmitters are, the more active those neurons are. And we're specifically going to look at dopamine in the activity of neurons on these three different pathways, which are illustrated in the picture below. And we're going to do this, we're going to look at how dopamine is involved in addictive behaviour by looking at an example of gambling. So let's say I go down to the supermarket and I see some scratch cards and I'm like, right, I'm going to have a go at those. So I fill in my scratch cards. Um, what is going on? Well, when I engage in an addictive behaviour, an area of the brain called the ventral tegmental area, a very important part this is, will start increased dopamine activity, meaning there will be more dopamine receptions on the neurons on these three different pathways. And all of them are involved in addictive behaviour. All of them start from the VTA. So as I'm scratching in my first few cards and having a go at my start of my um, gambling um, journey, what will happen is the VTA will stimulate and be able to then therefore cause this message that more dopamine is released. Let's look at our first dopamine pathway, which is the mesolimbic pathway, which is the pink one down the bottom. Because as I'm filling in my scratch cards, there's going to be more dopamine activity, therefore more neural activity down this um, pathway, and it's going to influence a part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. Now, the nucleus accumbens is known as the pleasure center of the brain. What will happen then is I'll get a buzz. I'll get quite excited. And so as I'm filling in my scratch, I'm like, oh, this is, this is really good. This is really exciting. I will get what's called mood modification, which is one of the, the characteristics of addictive behavior. And so as I keep doing that, I will get more and more of a buzz. But then suddenly what will happen is, is that buzz will start to reduce because the dopamine levels are reducing. The brain, after a while, will naturally say, OK, we've done this. Let's drag this dopamine level down. And so it will do that. And so therefore, I won't get the same excitement that I had got from carrying out that behaviour. This is called tolerance. So what will I do then? Well, either I will stop carrying on with the behaviour, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but generally what I will do is say, well, I want that buzz, so therefore I will increase. So I'll buy more scratch cards or I might go down to the casino and have a go on the roulette table or go to the bookies and send some money on money on some horses. I will keep upping and upping my engagement in the addictive behaviour in order to get the buzz. And that's why how we increase um, our engagement in addictive behaviours. One thing that's interesting point is, is though if we go um, if we go into tolerance levels of, and our dopamine levels are dropping, and then I decide to stop the addictive behaviour, what will happen is then if I decide to stop the gambling, say, right, that's it, no more scratch cards, no more casino for me, what will happen is my dopamine levels will drop even further. And there's a knock-on effect then, because they will go be underneath normal functioning. And this has a knock-on effect for all the kinds of other areas that dopamine is influencing. And so therefore, I will have start to feel sick, I might get mood swings, I might get nausea, I might have all kinds of things going on, I'm sweating. And this is be, these are withdrawal symptoms. I start to feel withdrawal. Now, the good thing is, is they will actually readdress themselves over time. But initially, this is very unpleasant and can be very unpleasant. So even something like a gambling addiction, I will get physical um, symptoms, withdrawal symptoms. So what will I do? I will engage again in the addictive behaviour in order to relieve myself of those withdrawal symptoms. Now, there's a researcher called Dr. Nora Volko who said, look, addiction's more than just I like it, so I repeat it. OK, it's I want to do it. And sometimes we want to engage in addictive behaviours, even if there doesn't seem to be any buzz anymore. or The magic's gone. Yeah, that the people will. So I might get to the point where I'm gambling. I might sell my house. I might get into debt. That's not that's not clever stuff. 
And that's not just about getting a buzz, something else is going on there. And what she said was really important was the mesocortical pathway. So it's dopamine activity down the mesocortical pathway. If you can see by the picture there, that influences the frontal cortex. And the frontal cortex is all about planning, what we're doing, planning, decision making, those kinds of things. Well, what she's saying is if our dopamine levels are um, irregular going through this mesocortical pathway, what that does is it actually changes the brain. It changes it slightly. And she talks about this idea of hijacking the brain. And so what will happen is I will start to think and plan more about gambling. I will start to start looking in the newspaper um, what's going on with the horses, or I might notice the adverts about um, gambling in between the football matches more. Um, I start to maybe place gambling as more important than my employment or my family or my friends. This is starts to happen, and this is obviously salience. Salience occurs because of changes in the frontal cortex due to dopamine activity up the mesocortical pathway. Now, there is one other area I'd like to talk about. Um, so there's the prefrontal cortex, sorry about that, um, is something called the dorsal striatum. Because dopamine, when I gauge in my addictive behavior, my scratch cards, my whatever I'm doing, what it will do is will send heightened dopamine activity up the nigrostriatal pathway. And this will change a part of the brain called the dorsal striatum. And what that is, is about habit forming. What happens is I keep sending information up there, I will then start to form a habit. So what will happen is, is if I usually buy a scratch card on a Saturday afternoon when I go shopping, and um, what will happen, and by the way, I don't, but if this, this is just a scenario, if I um, go shopping on a Saturday afternoon, what I will automatically do without thinking is buy a scratch card and fill it in because it's part of my habit, because the dopamine level has influenced the dorsal striatum and it's almost programmed it to be that way. So hopefully from this video, what you've been able to do is gain a little bit more understanding about the kind of biological process behind addictive behavior and how dopamine um, is influenced in the kind of characteristics of addiction. If you found the video interesting or uh, useful, just print the like on the bottom of the video. Um, and I hope you have a good day. Take care.